picture of the, the redwoods, the redbuds. Have you seen them? Now I tried to find just the right picture because here's my favorite part of the redbuds. You know, you're looking in the woods and you think, ooh, is there some purple in there? I mean, they're just so delicate. It's so much fun to find these first signs of spring. And that's really one of my very, very, very favorites. Let's see. Okay. It's not gonna work today. <laughs> we just do what we have to do. And we are in the middle of Lent. And I, do, I did get the uh, Lenten booklets, so we've got a few in the back if you want one. But it's 40 days of letting go. Actually, Paul is in here. I really like yours on detachment. This, but it's an interesting little book. I kind of like, in the past, they've used Feast and Famine. And, and this year, I don't know why they alphabetized the things. Can you imagine that? And, uh, but they do have something you're letting go of, and then you replace it with an affirmation. So it's, it's, a, it's a good little book. But I like that, that notion of fasting and feasting because when we withdraw our attention from something and uh, you know, it's not supporting us anymore, well, that's fasting from that. And then we feast on the truth. We feast on the principles that we do know. So I love that. Now, this morning on Sunday morning, they brought up Charles Schultz and Peanuts. And I hadn't looked at that in a while. So I was thinking about Okay, so what did they say? What did the Peanuts characters say about letting go? Well, remember Linus in the blanket? <laughs> so he says, don't do it, dog. If you touch this blanket, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. You will have regret and remorse and even experience repentance. But most of all, you will rue the day. <laughs> He's right, says Snoopy. I may have regret and remorse and even experience repentance. And then he grabs the blanket. But dogs never rue the day. <laughs> I love that one, don't you? <laughs> so, he, so he grabs it. <laughs> now I know my own children had blankets. My son had this beautiful one that was very delicately knit. It was kind of green and he called it B. And I mean, that thing was in strings and tatters by the time we got him to let go of that. So there are, you know, there are things that are just, that are hard to let go of. And uh, I did, there was one more cartoon. <laughs> so uh, here Charlie Brown and Linus are talking. Don't you ever get tired of that blanket? And he looks at it <laughs> and he throws it like an airplane, but it kind of boomerangs back, you know. And he said, oh, not really. <laughs> and that's the thing about what we let go of. And in fact, last week I was talking about temptation. You know, you're never tempted by something bad. You're tempted by chocolate and um, good things, you know. And, and that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Because a lot of these things sort of seem to support us. But we really got to look at the truth of it too. Do we really, did, did Linus really need that outside source? What blankets are we holding on to, huh? <laughs> Might be worth looking at for Lent. So <clears throat> make sure you're unmuted on your mind. Oh, okay. I am. Okay. Um, and I, the thing is, am I speaking into it? That's, that's the deal, Travis. Okay. Now, our daily word is dominion and I do use the absolute word. I always check it out <laughs> because I, I, I'll be reading and I go, oh, let's, see, let's look at the language here. So today it's dominion, the power of power, we sometimes say, or agency. So I claim dominion to direct the course of my life. In other words, I have the power to make the choices and to direct my life the way I want it to go. The principle of dominion is always mine to claim and use. All these principles are there all the time for us. Look around the room, they're all here. Knowing this, I move through life with quiet confidence. I am secure in myself and in the knowledge. I am fully divine and fully human. And we've been working on that all year. Fully divine, fully human. We've been working with the concept of bittersweet and, and, and the unfolding process. So 
I'll expand my life into a field of limitless possibility and potential. That's, uh, I love that. So, uh, oh, I was going to go to to the little booklet and see, so what are they letting go of this week? But really, you can, if this is alphabetical, you can just run around any, any way you want. And uh, this Sunday is talking about non-resistance a lot. And, um, and then we're letting go, if you stay by the book, darkness, discontent, discouragement, doubt, drama, <laughs> all the D's. <laughs> So, those are good things to let go of. So let's take some of this to prayer. And remember we use that affirmative prayer. And I love the idea of movements, like a spiral that expands. I open. God is. I am. I know and I can. And I appreciate. So, let us relax and let go. It's a beautiful spring. Well, it's not quite spring, but it's just so beautiful. And we breathe. We breathe in the sunshine. And we light up our bodies with that energy. I relax and I let go. And I open my mind and my heart to any lessons today, any community that is here, what is ours to do. Ah. <sighs> God is life, love, wisdom, and order. The order of the beautiful seasons, the transitions we make. And we do it with faith and strength as we make any transitions in our life. Going through seasons, going through seasons in our own lives. We appreciate that order and order is our divine nature. And we use the wisdom to, and the will to choose and commit to what we need to do next. I know and I can in this season of letting go gently look at all the blankets that I've been holding on to. And can I let those go? And then we replace them with the affirmation and the powers that we need to go forward. I appreciate this loving community wherever you are today. <laughs> and I appreciate this unity movement and the principles and the teachers and all that we've experienced within unity. And we, we want to make this message known and let us appreciate the ability to reach out and expand. And so it is. Amen. So my song this morning, it's Amy Steinberg. And I met her up in uh, North Carolina at a conference. And she is, she's just a lot of good energy. And her song is about letting go, ready to let go. So let's enjoy Amy's spirit today. Here's another new song. It's either called Ready to Let Go or Spiral Mountain. You tell me. Sun shines through my window.
place where I can see the truth of me that I hold my breath and Where I can see the truth of me Gotta hold my breath and take that leap So I can be free So I can be free On our midnight highway Headed to the sunrise Right with my head high I'll take it as low Because I know I'm ready I'm ready to let go This morning we have Susan Julie Gonzalez with us, uh, Science of Mind practitioner and our good, good, good friend, our laughing good friend. So good morning, Beverly. Good morning. Uh, and uh, we today we're looking at mind idea expression and bringing vision to life. We're gonna we're gonna start working on kind of a vision board. We have some ideas for that, and uh, we've been talking about it since January. Our theme this year, our mantra has been, I am connected. And then we've looked at the idea of compassion and how that connects you. And now we're looking at, well, what do we, do we need to let go of anything? And we're looking at that in the season of Lent. So, and we're getting ready for our annual meeting, you know. So, uh, so this seemed like a, a really good time to, to look at the idea of vision. So Susan, I'm gonna, Stand by and assist you, but I'm going to let you have it. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, it's always wonderful to be here. It's almost like the song is like it's so good to be with you. I love all the things you say and do. I <laughs> no, I can't sing, but I'd love to sing. Right? Um, there's that part of of just sing and bring you joy, and can we uh, sing and dance with life? And Jeannie, the song was perfect, let go. Um, I had the opportunity last week to be at the uh, CSL, the Centers for Spiritual Living Conference in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to share a little bit of that because it kind of works in with this letting go. Um, we had a couple of conference speakers, uh, Reverend, uh, Karen, Reverend Karen, um, oh my God, her last name just kind of, she's the minister down there. Just. Uh, Kevin, uh, Karen Fry and uh, David Alt. Um, there was another young man um, who um, I can't remember his name, but his his word that I walked away with, Kamir. And I want to share these things with you as we look at letting go and the visioning. Uh, and then Cynthia James was there um, also that I like took these one little phrase phrases that they said in their presentation and made them mine right and that's what that's what it's all about how can we hear what someone is saying take away what works for me and live that to enhance my life right that's and everything else is the fluff wherever we may get it from but it's that that nugget that we take with us and put in our pocket and we can reach for that tool. Um, and then uh, Jeannie and I were talking about uh, letting go and kind of the, the theme for me was, was the judgment, right? When we're hanging on to something, we're, we're, we're judging it, good, bad, or indifferent. 
the other word for me is grace. And I had the opportunity to uh, spend some time with my family when I was in Dallas um, after the conference. And my granddaughter's middle name is Grace. And so the reminder of grace after this intense um, which I'll share with you, uh, intense moment that I had at the conference, and then being with Grace. A five-year-old is just full of grace, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Aren't those babies just full of grace? Can we learn from them? Can we learn grace? And then, <coughs> can we accept grace? Can we accept grace? And depending on which translation we're looking at biblically, it's um, as the grace of God go I, and another one, for the grace of God go I. We're all in this thing called life. We're all in this thing called God, the universal divine mind. And so I invite you to, as the grace of God go I, have that be as you walk in the world as the grace of God. And taking a look at judgment, Jeannie, I was looking at your, um, your talk on bittersweet, and um, judgment was a, was a big part of, of my experience, my life experience, right? Um, uh, Reverend Karen Fry brought in a story of, that she had with her mom, and you know, she had mentioned, well, my mother did this for this many years, but I've been carrying it and judging it for this many years. And I thought, goodness gracious, goodness gracious, ha ha ha. <laughs> right? Have I been, have I been carrying you. around that with my mother? How long? How long? You know, that's, you know, always blame it on mom, right? And here I have adult children, so just blame it on mom. <laughs> So the, the judgment, we can judge. And I had a, a, just this wonderful oh person that is so dear and near to my heart. Um, they mentioned that they're very judgmental. And I thought, interesting. Interesting to have someone tell me they're very judgmental. And I had to ask myself, where am I being judgmental? Mm -hmm. And as a practitioner and... And being with, with um, friends, family, those that come into my circle to be prayerful with, I did reach out to a couple of people. My, am I, do you feel judgment from me when we sit down and pray together? And they're like, no, no, n never, never. I brought some things to you and I don't feel judgment. And then I thought, wow, for someone to show up there in my life to say, I'm very judgmental. I had to ask myself, well, where am I being judgmental, right? Everything's a mirror reflection. Mm -hmm. And so, how am I judging myself? And that was my thing. How am I judging myself? And so, am I giving myself that grace? That grace that I want to see, that I want to see for others, am I giving myself that grace? And as I release that thing, that let go, of that judgment, and be that thing as the grace of God go I for myself, for myself. And I invite you to be that grace for yourself. When you look in the mirror, as the grace of God go I, as the grace of God go I, and well, we are the grace of God. We, we are. The grace is in us. It's not something that we're given. It's just there. It's right. 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 And so can we accept that grace? Yeah. Can we accept we it are. being that grace? Can I accept being that grace for myself and letting go of any shoulda, woulda, coulda have said I've been tapping around with me, you know, that heavy duty stuff. And I, um, I, this week I grabbed a Keep It True Lent. And hmm, I want to go back to the, to the, uh, to the seminar. Uh, Reverend David Alt brought a, a phrase that I walked away with. Well done, my good and faithful servant. And so as we look at grace 
and judgment and judge not by appearances of what transpired because what is going on and what's being experienced what's the greater good the greater unfoldment and you Jeannie in the uh, in the in your in your talk on bittersweet uh -huh. um, you mentioned those things in life that we celebrate that we can celebrate and then those are those things that we we grow from and then as we grow from those we can celebrate those right we do celebrate them so we can can we take a look at everything as a an opportunity for celebration so the bitter it just feels bitter at first but it is something we grow from and then we do the celebration right yes so yes. that all turns into okay it all turns into celebration okay it all turns into the celebration and going to that righteous judgment and you mentioned you opened that up in your talk was mm -hmm. that righteous judgment that one hit me am I being righteous judgmental about myself and I need to be doing this and I need to be doing that and why haven't I done this is that righteous judgment and am I seeing that righteous judgment in the world well, there's a lot of shoulds. <laughs> right? <laughs> the shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah. You know, and I love my, my uh, former brother-in-law. He said, Susie, your brother is shouldn't all over me, you know? And it was the shoulds that we just, like, just keep on layering that on us. And so can we have grace? And so as we come to the visioning part, I want to bring this, can we have grace? Well done, my good and faithful servant, no matter what appeared in life before this moment in time well done my good and faithful servant right and and in our community well done well done here we are it's it's small but well done well so, done right okay. and and so i when i open this and i love opening up and i always like say a little prayer what, what is that thing that i just need to read about right now uh -huh. and i opened up to the resurrection Oh, okay. That was chapter 13, Keep a True Lent. And I'm, right? I die daily. Yes. That's I it. die yeah. daily. I die daily of the judgments. Can I let those judgments go? I die daily. The crucifixion, the crossing out is mm -hmm. daily. It's daily. And, and so is the resurrection, yeah. Yes. And the, and the grace is daily. The grace is daily. Can I remind myself, mm -hmm. well done, my good and faithful servant. Can I look at myself in the mirror <laughs> and say that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No matter the appearances, no matter the experiences, but can I have that grace? Okay. <laughs> can I have that grace? <laughs> And so I invite you to have that grace with what we experience here at Unity. And Jeannie, did you by chance get that Victor Frankl? I did. You did. Oh, this is fantastic. Um, I'm guessing most are familiar with Victor Frankl. Mm -hmm. Did you find that particular quote by chance? No. Well, actually I did, but I didn't put it in. Okay, that's okay. I don't have it exact words, but it's Victor Frankl. Um, was in a as a young man um, it sounded like he was a student had um, his professor said well the uh, the meaning of life is it's all combustion or something of that yeah. nature and he's like well if it's all you know well what is the meaning of life and that was what he took with him and he had correspondence with Sigmund Freud about the meaning of life and as you may or may not know Viktor Frankl was eventually in the um, Auschwitz Ausch Auschwitz does it pronounce that right? Auschwitz Auschwitz mm -hmm. and um, he was instrumental in helping people survive survive that particular moment in time and he said it's not the question is not what do I want from life or what will make me happy but is what is life asking of me what is life asking of me so I invite you to um, let's just kind of uh, 
wiggle, wiggle our bodies a little bit. Just wiggle our bodies and maybe wiggle it with a little laugh. Ready? Wiggle it. <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, and so I invite you to um, close your eyes and let's ask this question. We know that ask and you shall receive. And so I'm going to um, ask this question as you close your eyes and just go into this little meditative moment of, of asking, what is life asking of me? What is life asking of me? Mm -hmm. How would life like to sing and dance the joyful dance of life as me? comes to mind I think there's pens and maybe the back of a paper that you might want to jot something down if you'd like um, if something calls you and just know that everything that you need to remember you will remember anything important if you don't write it down right now and then the collectiveness the collective unity of each individual person at Unity Church of Little Rock, what is life asking of itself as unity of Little Rock? And if nothing comes up at the right now, it's okay. We've asked the question. Mm -hmm and answers come while you're taking a shower, while you're driving down the road. You'll get a brilliant idea. Trust those brilliant ideas. And as we let go of any of the judgment of what we think we are to do, we know that unity of Little Rock and the I that I am, that that is one, that there's no separation. asking what resources do I have available as my gifts and talents to be a part of the celebration of unity of Little Rock. Is there anything else that needs to be known right now? And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the ideas that have come to us at this moment in time. I'm going to invite you to open your eyes. And if you want to jot anything down to share.
And Jeannie, my understanding is we're going to do a little bit more of this later, correct? Yeah. We, 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 yeah, for those who stay, yeah. Yes. Okay. So. so. I, I want to share this with you. This, um, I came across this book. I had misplaced it for a number of years. But this, um, as we look at what comes to us, the ideas as gifts, the more you seek God, the less you will find God. If you do not seek God, you will find God. God does not ask anything else of you except that you let go and let God be God in you. Above all else then, be prepared at all times the gifts of God and be ready always for new ones for God is a thousand times more ready to give than we are to receive. And this is Master Eckhart. So with these ideas, don't be shy. Okay. There are ideas from the divine, the divine mind. So any any shares? Well, I share spiritual energy, which often translates into physical energy. <laughs> yes. And uh, dancing. And my faith of ex positive expectancy, I share... I have a gift of showing up <laughs> in a lot of places. I'm the ch church lady. And the power of strength comes across with me as perseverance. Nice. Ooh. So that's that's what came to me. Nice. Anyone else? <laughs> I shared uh, to be a light, uh, to be zeal and energy and enthusiasm, <laughs> to be a way shower, to be a, an example, to be... Uh, I'll give up. Yes, yes, yes. Anyone else? My word is just sorry, to just be, to be observant. Observe without judgment. Observe without judgment. Nice. Nice. And you're always a beautiful presence here. Oh. And that is, that's, that, that, I think that fits. That fits, Bernie. Yeah. Uh, you know, this morning, this is so perfect, I was riding in, and I was in this really cool spot. It might have been because I slept till 7 o'clock, which I never do. I woke up and it was daylight, but I was driving in, I'm thinking, what is this feeling? And what I realized, I was in this space of, I'm not trying to make anyone wrong about anything today, and I'm not trying to make myself right about anything today. And that's just that sweet spot of being right there. And that's what I'm hearing. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, but share. <laughs> I'll just share it myself. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah. That is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 where it that's it, right? <laughs> we share ourselves, yes, yes. You know, I, I wanted to share something on the judgment, how I mentioned that you know what was I mirroring I'm also mirroring acceptance and I am seeing acceptance in those around me there's like a fantastic amount of acceptance that I feel and I learn from you in the acceptance of being okay with who I am <laughs> yeah thank you thank you Beverly do you have a share no anyone else no. Susan, I wanted to go back a little bit to Viktor Frankl. Um, okay. Just because you told me some things that really impressed me. I didn't realize this. But after that teacher confronted him and he said, well, what is life asking of me? He told me that he then, uh, he worked with Sigmund Freud, but he made, did a lot of uh, suicide yes. intervention uh, clinics. In and, Vienna, yes. And so he was really well established as a psychiatrist before he was put into the uh, the prisoner, you know, the Jewish camps. Yeah. Yeah. And but then just think he took that gift of what he learned from that experience and he applied it in the camps because people around him were in such despair. And he taught that the, you know that you really have a freedom in here that you, you know, that no one can take away. It, it's your choice. And he, so he taught that. And so it's so interesting how he was really prepared through that question and his work to then, in a really dire circumstance, do something. And I think that's where our gifts show up, you know. And um, like right now, we are 
we are in between a little struggle and, a, and, and thriving. And we don't know, we're in that in-between space. And, and we've, like, we've had these wonderful gifts on uh, Wednesday Wellness show up. These wonderful gifts. Wednesday Wellness has become a wonderful night with many people contributing now. And uh, so you just never know. You never know. And so, like, receive the gift and, and, and know that it, it is something then to, to give. Yes, wow. yes, and also uh, Michael Beckwith talks about in, in, with visioning is that vision, vision, pain pushes until the vision pulls. And so that's kind of what you were saying uh, right there. Pain pushes, that thing, that thing that wants to show up, yeah. you know, is, is in us and it, is, it wants to express itself and it's pushing from the inside out, right? It's, everything's an inside out. Yep. Yeah. Everything's inside out. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. I like that. And, and so then we're going to do some collaging afterwards. Um, I brought some paper and Jeannie, you've got scissors and glue, yes. right? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, so we can do a vision board. And so with, um, and what I'd like to do when we do that is, is set us up a little bit to kind of clear the space. Okay. And um, do some visioning where we're not seeking what we want, but what is spirit seeking? What is the divine? What is okay. life? Seeking? What is like at? Asking, yeah, okay. asking of us. Yes. All right. That, I look forward to that. Okay, so, so. I will turn it over to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> well, we. I, I believe in amazing things, and I, we played uh, Michael Gott last. Uh, Sunday and everyone just loved him so I wanted to play this song so uh, you can just sit quietly and enjoy it let the music envelop you and uh, we'll think about this as we approach the rest of the year. Amazing Amazing You will do Amazing things Amazing, amazing, you will do amazing things. You will do amazing things with the choice each new day brings, and with every step you take. Bless the progress that you make The reason you live Is there in every gift you give Love your life, love your dreams You will do amazing things Amazing Places you will go and the people you will know. Don't worry when, where, or how. You don't need to know that now. You're on the right track. No need to look ahead or back. Just enjoy what this day brings. You will do amazing things. it out just stay in the here and now let your mind rest for a little while sometimes deepest dancers come when you're out there having fun so close your eyes and take a breath and smile Amazing. 
amazing Amazing You will do Amazing things Amazing Amazing You will do amazing things So you know what I'm going to make you do? Just not at that awkward, too long, awkward stare, but just, you know, catch somebody's eye for just a minute and just let them know. Amazing. And find somebody else. Amazing. Tell them. You will do amazing things. Amazing. responsible for my own experience <laughs> and right now you can know the truth for yourself you are not here on accident it's not too late it's not too late don't give up we don't have a lot of do's and don'ts in science of mind but this is a big don't don't I want you to sing, amazing, amazing, I will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing, I will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing. I will do amazing things. You will do amazing. God bless you.